This is the April 4th meeting of the Tuckton Borough Planning Board. Uh, we have a couple of appointments tonight. One is a preliminary discussion for a two lot subdivision, um, and one is a formal submission for a 20 lot subdivision, which is probably where most of you are here. Um, the preliminary discussions, discussions, and just so everyone understands, are non binding, so it, it is basically them coming and saying, This is what we would like to do, and to get reactions to it from the board, and it kind of gives them a direction on which way to go with it. Uh, the formal uh, submission, the, the larger subdivision, is, is formal, and they are formally presented to the board. We'll assume jurisdiction and such and so forth if everything is complete. Um, we're going to do a little bit of housekeeping stuff first, which is just going over minutes, but then uh, the applicant will you know, read the application uh, where it is. The applicant will present it, and then people will have the opportunity to speak when we open the public session for or against the application. Please just make sure you say your name and address clearly just so that we have it for the record. So, does anybody have any questions before we start or questions about procedure or how it goes or nothing? Okay. All right, everyone have a chance to look at the minutes and does anybody have any changes? I they were good. So I only have one change, which was on page two where I stated the codes officer has the ability to enter a property and I just wanted to add with the proper procedure. Okay. All right, first up is Mary Ann Stockman. Oh, sorry. Stockman. A minute. oh I'm sorry. A minute. I'll make a motion. I'll second that motion. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right, first ap application is Mary Ann Stockton Tax Map 65-3-2, two lot subdivision, pre-application discussion. And Matt, do you need to appoint an alternate as a voting member today? Uh, let's see, we have one, two, three, Maureen. three. Huh? Maureen. Maureen is, Maureen is not here. Right, right. So, so we can appoint. We can appoint Gary as a Sure. Do I need a motion for that? Mm. No. No, you don't We're going to appoint Gary Quah as a uh, member for this, as we do for the Okay. Mary Ann Stockman, tax map 65-3-2, two-lot subdivision, <laughs> and the street address on that. Oh, it's uh, 15 Middle 15, 15 Middle Road. All right. You guys are up. All right. <coughs> For the record, I'm Dale McConkey of Town Clover Lane, Freedom, New Hampshire. I don't know if you need an agent authorization yes, or anything for her. Thank you. So, <coughs> should have brought a couple more copies, but we have a couple of small copies here of what is currently there. So, this is the property we're talking about here where it says Lot 1, 60.6 acres. Mm -hmm. And so down here is the frontage on the road, which I believe it's about 600 or so through the frontage down there, right? Yeah, of course. So uh, our question is, because what we want to do is we have a septic design as well. We got approved to have here as well. And so where that is in relation to the map you're looking at, if you look at the ponds mm -hmm. right down the borderline, right pretty much in the middle of that hill so this is the proposed <coughs> yep septic yep which is right yeah and so what we're wondering is one what we'd like to do is subdivide how many acres anything uh, around around 12 to stay with it okay so the, house, the, the thing is putting a road here past the tree line and coming into the property via this way. So I'm wondering, one, if that's something that needs all, it seems like it needs zoning as far as frontage would go. Well, you're allowed up to three houses on one driveway. Is so that what it is? There's a couple of different ways you could skim this. Okay. So how many buildings so do you have right now? There's three, 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 lot, three lots on the driveway. So let me refer, three lots okay. on the driveway. Well, the other thing is, um, 
there's 36 acres in Wolfboro that's kind of it, it goes to the property, but there's no access to it. So we wanted to have like yeah. a, a, sort of a right away um, also off of that subdivision. So that's the only road frontage that goes to that 60. You could and actually to the 36. As I understand it, if you wanted to, Jack and anyone else, you could, in theory, you know, you do this, and you could do that. Do that with the existing driveway? Yep. That's an interesting idea. Without having to subdivide, or you'd still have to subdivide. You're allowed two houses in <coughs> on one lot, so technically you wouldn't, I mean, you want to sit down and show Jack exactly what you want to do. But you don't technically need to subdivide it if all you're looking to do is put two houses on it. Can't change the name. Yeah, the same yeah, name. Same, same same both have the same name. And we'll yeah. only charge 25% of whatever you want to spend on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so, as far as say getting a right away from this property so over to the Wolfboro one, is that any anything? Any decent attorney can put that down on. You know, you'd want to do a right away with a right to improve. Yeah. So you could run utilities and stuff like that. That's my my mother's concern was, uh, you know, for grandkids and her daughter to be able to have house lots in there. And well, the problem, then you would, you would have to change. To cut off 109A to a road, then it can't be a driveway. So it would have to be like a town road? It had to be built to town specs once you went over the three lots. Okay, so up to three lots, you could. It's going to be a lot cheaper to do <coughs> three lots. Yeah, because the road standard is pretty. Okay. And you'll need a driveway permit from the state. Yeah, well, that's where we that's where we were having a problem. We can only have two driveways right. on the property yeah, right. from the state. Right, and, and he was counting our trailer parking, our uh, barn part of our barn as it's a driveway. Only fifteen feet off. Yeah, it's the an road. access to the road, though. Yeah, but they just consider an access to the road as an access to the road, so whether it's a driveway or not. So I guess what we were going to have to do is fill in the driveway that goes all the way around my house, even though technically it's one driveway, not two but fill in the end of that and put a lawn or something in mm -hmm. between the house and the barn, right? right? And then you could run two other lots off of that. So the only way to subdivide is to take that little frontage, so uh, my understanding. No, the frontage can be on a driveway. Okay. Doesn't yeah. have to be on the road. There, there's a lot of ways you can do it. They can do a, uh, I mean, you'll see sometimes on plan, you'll see cuts that come in to yep. increase the road frontage off of the road. In order to accommodate, I mean, there's there's a lot. Oh, of okay. Ways. So we don't have to subdivide the whole 50 acres to build um, down the pond, which is the other side. That's what I was thinking. It had to go with that one lot. So you can, you know, you can subdivide. You can have easements across other lots. Yeah. So all, can, oh, there's okay. a million different ways. You can do I, I can still use the road frontage that stays with the. Because that's what we didn't want to do was cut the field right in half. You know. I don't blame you. Yeah. But you still can do it on an easement. Okay. Yeah. We have one now that was done at Estates. Yeah. There's six lots off two driveways. Okay. So you could save yourself a lot of money. Yeah. Um, and it, it'd be just as good. I mean, it's. Yeah, I don't. I don't. Mm -hmm. one, Plus, this the whole law here is in current use, so all that has to be taken out of current use. All wherever the driveway is. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. And then if, if all the excavation for the driveway and the house and all that is over 100,000 square feet, it's in there. Had a Alteration terrain for it as well. I had to create a condominium. Yeah, for the driveway. To reset. Anything over 100,000 oh, square feet of excavation. No, no. For another house. Keep, so I'm going to put another house. Keep taking stabs at it. 99,000 square feet. Wait a year in the next 99,000. I just think I'm going to be jealous of you. I mean, it, there's, there's a number of ways to do it. I mean, if my advice would be before you did anything, I would talk to. An attorney who does this fairly frequently and be like, this is what I want to achieve, what's the best way to do that? Because he can, if you have an attorney who's not that savvy with it and he puts in an easement, you may find out down the line that you can't run yeah. utilities or you run into some sort of mm -hmm. problem with this or some sort of problem with that versus them writing it the right way and crafting it right. And you can 
Now there, there's an uh, easement that goes in, I want to build the house on the pond, on the Witten Pond there. Can't say Lane Yeah, and there's a right away across from Lane Pond Road into it, yep. but it's, we don't own the road frontage on it. Now can I, can I build in there using that rope, that easement? Depends what the easement stated is used yeah. for. Yeah. So it's your property? If it's, if it's yeah. stated it's used for access farmland, <coughs> it's not a driveway for a house, it's an access farmland. Yeah. So you're talking about the There's a little teeny tiny strip of land. Where the snowmobile trail yeah. comes out. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's like 10 feet from the, the bridge. Yep. And that that's that's where our easement goes through for sand and for wood. So the problem is, is that... So yeah. that's why we were looking at this other thing was because to get the utilities, there's a utility pole on the back right in front of my barn. Well, here's another question. Who owns, where's the dominant parcel? Are you friendly with people who own the dominant parcel? Uh, I don't yeah. know. I, guess I mean, it so. I seemed to be know. friendly, but it, so, I don't really know them. I mean, if it was me, I mean, I would be, because from, from running utilities from here to here versus from here to here yeah. is going to be a lot cheaper. So that's why, I mean, cutting down for, from the barn. Is it too yeah, bad? But I mean, you might just say, listen, I know this is what you, you own the rights to this easement, and I'm allowed to take timber, I'm allowed to, you know, use it for timber, I'm allowed yeah. to do this. This is what I would like to do, you know, pass over this. If you have an objection, I will pay the cost to modify the deed to reflect the change in the easement to do that. Yeah. And you can save thousands of dollars of running utilities yeah. over the Well, that's what, ideally, that's what I'd like to do. I mean, if he says no, I don't want to. require a new driveway permit, too, so you have to have the 400 feet of site facility both directions. Yeah, and it's yeah. better than coming off the San Diego the other way. I mean, you've got, you got a lot of options. Yeah. Well, I was just thinking that it would avoid dealing with if they don't want to do anything over there, if they just went straight from the pole that's right in front of my barn, it would go straight back and it's about six poles to get out there. Right about that? Well, the power can come from anywhere. Yeah. It doesn't have to follow the driveway. I mean, whoever has the land under the wires creates the easement. Right. It doesn't mean because your driver's are with the power has to come from there. Yeah. It took it about four or five grand a pole. Is that what it's on now? So, person's free. Right. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Thanks, Matt. <laughs> the, the, the other thing is that, yeah, I mean, we do want him to have his own piece of property. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we, we didn't know about doing that first or... Well, you know, if, if ever you wanted to sell that house. That's why yeah, I think he should have his own that's piece that's of property there. That's why it should be a separate lot. Yeah. That's, that's why we're thinking that I'd have to have so that like road frontage. If, if, if that easement's written correctly, it's, there's no different. Yeah. <coughs> mm -hmm. I have a piece of property that is an easement over another, my, actually, I have a but, and you can, it's six acres, and the way the easement's written, you could divide that six acres into multiple different lots over the easement. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. Whatever your limit of the driveway is on. Yeah. So, so at the time you wanted to sell it, you would have to subdivide it into two lots. And my understanding was that, that I had to have the road frontage to be able to subdivide. That's what Owen and I had talked to you about. Frontage can be on the driveway. Okay. A common driveway for the three lots or the two lots. Frontage can be on the driveway. Okay. But, but it has to be to the driveway, not through an easement. It has to be. Okay. But knowing, seeing how far this is from here and that is from there, the first thing I would do, and knowing what, kind of what it costs to run power, yeah, I would talk to those people who won't have that, you know, who are the dominant parcel on the easement you already mm -hmm. have, and see if they care, yeah. or see if you can make a reasonable accommodation with them, okay, because you'll save thousands of dollars. Yeah, it's a fifty, yeah, I mean, fifty grand quickly. In yeah, way. like all that. <laughs> you know. I mean, it, it makes it all cleaner anyway. <coughs> I so hope we get it complete. No, I think I think it's good. Yeah, okay. pretty good idea. Yeah. That's nice. Can't do that in freedom. No, freedom's pretty restricted. Yeah, I've heard the town name freedom. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you guys have any other questions? Oh, that's it. Well, we appreciate it. You, you wouldn't have any problem going through Tufton Borough into Wolfboro on the on the easement. 
Yeah. Okay. I mean, there's there's houses in Tuffenboro and Wolfboro that the town line, like town line right. house runs, but town line runs for its porch. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I didn't think. I mean, with the septic. Don't worry, both taxes. So. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> um, is this in current use? Yeah. So just be aware. I mean, I don't know how far you guys have gotten with it, but just be aware that before you you know do anything that's going to affect that status that you have afterwards a year and then the town's going to want some money okay. so. Sure. so is that just in the way the house is the house the driveway the septic area the well right. area you're, you're basically right. you're basically going to pay for the first billable lot so yeah you know whatever the billable lot is whatever it takes to build the lot you're going to pay for 10 percent of that value as a penalty you want to leave the rest in there yeah yeah, good. Sounds good. You just have to keep 10 acres. For 10 acres. 10 of the house. Yeah. Well, you have to keep, you need 10 acres to keep in current use. Okay. Right. Okay. Sounds good. Looks good, yeah. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the Planning Board, General Public. Again, Scott Lawler from Norway Plains Associates. Uh, obviously, I'm here with Mary Beth Hertel. Um, <coughs> excuse me. And we're here to uh, represent a proposed 20 lot subdivision at Federal Corner Road. Um, just to orientate uh, the uh, members of the board and the public, again, we're Federal Corner Road. We're on the, uh, excuse me, the uh, east side of Federal Corner Road, uh, Mary Beth's. Hertel's house is just up here, here, and this is a, <coughs> excuse me, a 54 plus or minus acre piece of property. Back in 2009, this parcel was uh, obtained conditional approval from the Tufton Borough Planning Board <coughs> for a 19 lot residential subdivision. I'm just going to flip over one sheet here. This was the plan that received uh, conditional approval. Uh, by the planning board in 2009. Again, it was uh, to cons to create the 19 uh, house lots. It was to construct a town road about 2,300 linear feet up to a cul-de-sac with lots on essentially both sides of it. The lots all ranged from like just over one acre to about three and a half acres. And then there was kind of a big over uh, open space uh, remaining land that went around sort of the back of some of the lots and around the front. Um, during uh, that process, this uh, subdivision was approved with a paved road. It was an 18 foot wide paved road with two foot gravel shoulders. Uh, each of the lots were to be serviced by uh, on-site septics and wells. Uh, and at that time, it received all the state permits required, which included wetlands permits for a couple crossings, uh, an alteration of terrain permit to deal with the stormwater that was being generated and the size of the project, uh, and also obtained uh, NHDS subdivision approval 
for the lots that were under five acres, which in this case was all of them with the exception of uh, the remaining land um, didn't require that. Um, that was in 2009, and uh, unfortunately for the hotels, uh, that was about the same time when the market, housing market fell out, and uh, it just wasn't uh, a good time to be constructing uh, a town road and uh, two building there. So we fast forward uh, to 2019, uh, 2018, I should say. Um, Norway Plains uh, came in front of the uh, planning board uh, under design review. It was about a year ago, I believe. Uh, and we outlined a, um, what our plans were at the time, which was to bring this subdivision back to life again from what it was previously approved. Um, and we talked to the, the board at that time about uh, you know, redoing some of the lots to account for um, more current standards. We also talked to the board about upgrading uh, the road standards uh, to be consistent with the new town of Tuftonboro uh, subdivision regulations. And uh, we also talked to the board at that time that we were going to have to go through and reapprove any of the state permits that were uh, had at that time expired. So that's why, we, so for the last, essentially the last nine months to 10 months, we've been working on obtaining all the information necessary to put together a set of uh, subdivision plans um, to complete uh, the application again from the board. Again, uh, so what we're proposing is a 20 lot residential subdivision. So we went from 19 lots up to 20 lots, so I'm sorry, adding one additional lot. Um, and uh, again, they're all single family residents. Uh, the property was, uh, there was a lot line revision done uh, last year that sort of chopped off the rear part of the lots. Now the lot got a little smaller, it's 54 acres now. And again, we're proposing all uh, lots to be between one, you know, a little over one acre and uh, six acres. The largest lot on the property would be six acres. Um, as in, to create uh, frontage for the lots, uh, we are essentially creating about 3,000 feet of roadway that comes into a cul-de-sac. Um, that roadway will be a, up to the standards now, which is 22 feet <coughs> wide um, pavement with two foot gravel shoulders on either side. Um, and we've gone through and re redesigned any of the road that was made longer and we looked at other areas that were more critical with regards to the environmental impacts. Uh, under the original 2009 permit, for example, uh, at the locations of the wetland crossings, which were four of them, um, the stormwater was essentially just sheet flowing off the proposed roadway down into the areas near the wetlands and then ultimately into the wetlands. Uh, under the current new rules, we've uh, designed those crossings uh, to have bituminous Cape Cod berms uh, so that the water didn't go directly into the wetlands. It was captured, collected, and discharged further away from the wetlands into treatment areas. One of the, uh, one of the major things that we did with this project uh, was we brought it up to the current Alteration of Terrain Bureau regulations, which has to do with the stormwater. 2009, uh, or when this was approved in 2008, the stormwater regulations weren't as uh, sensitive as they are now. Um, certain things like groundwater recharge were not in effect back then. Uh, volume calculations weren't as uh, critical back then. So when we took on this project, uh, and we had to assure that it adhered to the state regulations for all the stormwater. So we've designed a, a system of infiltration basins, treatment swales, infil and uh, detention basins to ensure that the stormwater that's being generated from the proposed roadway and from the homes would all be collected, treated before being discharged off the property. We have to adhere to the state's uh, criteria for to ensure that there was no increase in stormwater leaving the property at the at the points of analysis, as we say. Um, and all of that was reviewed by the state alteration of train bureaus and was granted a permit uh, in January from the alteration of train bureau. 
So they, the state has essentially done a very thorough review of all of our drainage <coughs> analysis calculations and design plans to ensure that they meet the most current standards for stormwater management. We've also uh, reapplied and have been granted approval from the state subdivision, NHDES subsurface, for all the lots. So what we essentially proved out is that the lots have the proper size to adhere to the site uh, soils, uh, well radiuses, um, to make sure that they adhere to the state rules. Um, as part of the uh, design process, we've also met with the uh, fire chief and we've discussed with the fire department about locations of pull-offs. So over the course of 3,000 feet, we've got four fire turnoffs. that are basically widened sections of 10 feet wide by 60 feet long. They're located uh, pretty evenly along the edge of the proposed right-of-way to allow for any emergency vehicles to be able to pull over, have two or three vehicles pass at one at, at an area. Uh, we also talked with the fire uh, department in regards to uh, fire protection. In the 2009 uh, approval, the subdivision was approved with a condition that uh, upon building permits, each of the homes would have to submit uh, designs to the fire department for individual residential sprinkler systems or a cistern. So at initially in 2009 it was designed with cistern and then they switched it over to the residential sprinkler system as part of their final approval. Uh, we met with uh, the fire chief and he continues that same philosophy. Uh, so he is, he's acceptable to either method for fire protection. Uh, I think he submitted uh, documentation to the planning board, his recommendations, which is that if the, upon the first building permit, either there has to be a 30,000 gallon cistern, excuse me, first CO, not first building permit, first certificate of occupancy, there has to either be an installation of a 30,000 gallon cistern or uh, that home in future homes will have to have uh, the individual residential sprinkler systems. Um, there will be the building permit. Because they're not going to finish building it with a sprinkler on it. Correct. Okay. The sprinkler system at building permit, CO would be the sister. Thank you, Jack. Um, and uh, there's a lot of detail in these plans, as you can see. Uh, we've gone through, intensively gone through, for construction details, stormwater management details, um, road profile plans, cross sections. Uh, I'd gladly answer any of the board's uh, questions. I think it's uh, probably a lot for me to just go through every sheet, but I'm more than willing to if the board would like. Um, but that, that's kind of the, the coming right back full circle. Essentially what we're in front of the planning board uh, tonight is to present an application. Uh, for consideration of complete and uh, if the board deems uh, to go forward with it. Um, it's a relatively similar to what was previously approved by the planning board in 2009. We have lengthened the road a little bit. There is a waiver request uh, that we've submitted, uh, which was submitted back in 2009 as well. And again, the, uh, with the approval of the fire department um, recommendations. And that's the only waiver request that we've submitted. Uh, if the board has any other questions, again, I'd gladly answer them. <coughs> we just have one housekeeping item real quick. Sure. Um, we have reviewed the application. The application is complete. Um, so now we have a motion to accept jurisdiction over the application. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 I apologize. I should have done that first. But mm -hmm. But yes. um, you're going to be building this road in two phases. That's can correct. You, can you tell us a little bit how that first phase is going to work and where it goes to on the plan? So the first phase is, is about in this general area here. Yeah. Um, and the reason we did it in two phases was partly uh, to adhere to the state alteration train rules, which states that you can't have more than five acres open at any given time. Open means is un, uh, left open and not uh, fully vegetated. So in talking with the hotels, what they'd like to do is construct that portion of the road, get the side slope stabilized, get everything all green establishment, and then move forward on the second phase. Um, Mary Beth indicated uh, when we spoke to her that it was her desires at, that time, at this time not to do any home uh, sales 
or construction until all 3,000 feet have been in the start. All right, that was my second part of my question. Okay. So you'll complete the road before right. any lots are cleared and construction starts. And as far as the pavement goes, bind the coax down? Correct, correct. Yeah, it would be our recommendation to, the, to them not to install the wearing coax until um, later down, once they've got more homes established and constructions sort of fizzled, you know, slowed down to a point. Okay. Where would the cistern be located? That they uh, they didn't pick a, a spot. I would presume that we would find a, a suitable place about midway in the subdivision. There is there is some areas that we could probably find uh, a location for. Again, at this time, uh, Mary Beth is uh, is uh, considering doing the residential fire suppression systems. Um, I guess um, at some point she'll make that decision if it's economically. Um, from my discussions with uh, other fire suppression um, is that uh, the cost of these residential systems have gone down drastically. Um, I'm hearing numbers of four, three to four thousand dollars for the residential because of the use of PEX these days and not copper. Um, the codes are such that you don't need every room. It doesn't have to have a, a head and only in certain areas. It's um, those type of things. And so uh, from my understanding, the price has come down drastically just in the last 10 years. Yeah, I heard a figure of 5,000. Mm -hmm. Nice to view, nice to see too. When you go through a house that has a lot of it's mm -hmm. clean. Right, and there's, there's benefits for the homeowners in regards to insurance. insurance. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You also are looking at, I think it's lots two through 10 for rain gardens. That's correct. Uh, yes, I had it in my notes here. Thank you for pointing that out. Uh, and that's generally because of the proximity and the, and the topography of the land. We wanted to ensure that the, the runoff coming from the homes, garages, and parts of their driveways, given that they're sort of down gradient of the road, would be taken care of. So we've got in the approval from Alteration of Train is the installation of uh, residential rain gardens to be installed on those lots. Uh, we've sized them uh, to basically account for about three to 4,000 square foot impervious coverage um, and, and they would be installed behind the, along the homes and, and uh, as part of the sale of those properties in, de in their deeds has to be noted that they have to have these rain gardens. Um, out of nature way. Correct. Okay. So the rain gardens, are, they specific, are you specifically saying where they can go? We did, in, on the, in the construction okay. drawings, we do demonstrate yeah. locations for them all. That's correct. And so the, the person responsible for the rain gardens putting them in would be the landowner at that time? Absolutely. Whoever. So they have their contract to do it, but mm -hmm. they would do it personally. Right. And, 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 <clears throat> and some, you know, um, rain gardens slash bioretentions, uh, they could be vegetated with, uh, you know, natural bushes and shrubs. They could also be lawn. Uh, the nowadays, uh, the uh, stormwater uh, center has determined that you know lawn rain gardens are just as effective as ones that you would think uh, with the plants. Uh, the key is is you have that 18 inches of soil media that's below that allows for the treatment. And I take it that's something that. Jack, you would have to. No, who's who's in the spec? Overseeing that to DS. install correctly. DS. In, well, I guess it would be the HOA would be ensuring that okay. they get installed. So before a certificate of occupancy, you have to be assured that it's there. So that that will be written into the deed for the property. Correct. Yes. Okay. What are we doing for utilities? Um, currently we were hoping to go overhead, um, although the Mary Beth might decide when she gets in there and starts laying things. Sure. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, I think our sky is on the ground only. I think our specs are underground. I believe so. I'm thinking of recent subdivisions that are all on the ground. I, they, I was yeah. going to say, I think they are. <coughs> and, uh, and the, what's all, I don't know if it's a requirement, but it's certainly been done. Yeah. Yeah. It's on the ground utility. Oh, okay. so. Also, I know you had lot building capacity in several lots. 
of 600 gallons per day mm -hmm. up to top. Um, it's 150 a day per person, I take it. It's 150 per bedroom. Per so bedroom. That, so it, yeah, so soap surface approves when you get a lot approved is based upon. What are the other lot loading capacity? They're all, they're they're all for 600. They're all, they all adhere to the state regulations, which is for a four bedroom system or 600 gallons right. per day. It's four bedrooms. Four bedrooms. All right. You went on the smaller lots, 1.368 mm -hmm. loading capacity, 600 gallons. Mm -hmm. It's the third or fourth sheet in the set. We have all the lot loading calculations for each lot, both at the town level and at the state for the state review. Scott? Yes. We just noticed that. Your uh, wetland permit um, expired last August? Correct. And um, are so you getting another one in the tune? Actually, uh, <laughs> I have it here in my notes, and my apologies for not explaining that better. Uh, the cartels actually installed the culverts at those crossings before it expired in August, okay. took photos, and submitted it back to DES. Mm -hmm. So as far as DES is concerned, that permit was executed before it expired. Yeah, great. So we, we, <laughs> we worked, the, Mary Beth and Gary worked very hard to get those in before they expired, because mm -hmm. they had been granted several extensions over yeah. the over their life, but that was executed. What kind of covenants are you guys thinking of, or square footage restrictions? Or yeah, we really I, haven't gotten. I guess what do you envision? Just, you know. Um, well, typical. I try to keep it as simple as possible. You know, um, once you start construction, the outside will be done completely within a year. No unregistered vehicles, no mobile homes. Um, but to try to not get. I don't want a laundry list of, of covenants. Um, this is going to take a while. This isn't going, you know, we're going to slowly work slowly. at this. And um, as we go, um, I know before, you know, before we can sell a lot, I'll have all that in place. Um, I have all that from the 2009 that we did, but I might tweak it and change it a bit. You know, we, no one on this board has been doing it particularly long. Jack's probably the longest surviving member right. of the board. Um, but, I mean, in the times I can remember, and this has nothing to do with our approvals and drainage <coughs> and stuff like that, I can probably, there's probably been two or three subdivisions like this, and I think two or three of them have come back and been changed into something else. Right. And, you know, and I, it's more just me wanting to share the information that, you know, before you, you know, this is going to be expensive. Right. You know, it's just, you know, keep that in mind. A lot of them have been switched into a larger lot, you know, right. gone from, I think Scott worked on one or two of them. Yeah. And, you know, they've gone, yeah, they've gone from 23 lot to uh, four, you know, four. four lot, you know, and stuff like that. So I just, you know, I, I was kind of curious, you know, how do you see this, you know, going out and, you know, building out? And I know Baxter Woods is probably the last built out subdivision in Tuftenborough. I know they say that took about 20 years. It's, and it's still vacant lots in there. Yeah. So we're just, and you got Fallen Pond on Tom, even Wharf Road. Yeah. I think they're still working on that. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Yep. Which is yeah. very nicely done. Really well done. Yes. In our opinion, right there. <coughs> Mary Beth, one yeah. of the things that will be challenging is we have power lines coming through there. Correct. And I think it's lot, I don't know, is that lot six or 16 right here? <coughs> uh, real close. Um, there's two or three lots that are very close. So, you know, people are going to be asking about those power lines. And they go to buy that. I've already, I've experienced this personally as well as in the right. business, and I'm sure you have too. Um, do we know what the power of these power lines are? Do you understand it? You know what they generate? The yes. Proximity to houses. Yes. So you can explain that to people. Correct. You don't fear any safety problems with people there. No, okay. we have all. The, we we actually I just got the joint use agreement from EverSource today. Okay. Um, and they understand, you know, where our building envelopes are, yeah. and because they have that, they just cut that whole easement out. So right, I know. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's um, gotten big. <laughs> it's gotten very big. Yeah. <laughs> um, Do they plan expanding? No. No. They have a right away, and they used to just trim. <laughs> yeah, they just went there and yeah, clear. Yeah, the lines. It's and cheaper in the long run for them. So. The whole country is doing this. So. Yeah, this for storm. You know, right, for the storm, right. The, um, so yeah, it was eye opening when they went through there. Yeah. Um, and I, I just currently had some discussions with them while we were doing the joint use about the cleanup out there. And you, I don't know if you've noticed, but there's been crews out there cleaning up that. So they said it was a, this is off the subject, but it's a safety issue because there's kids out there on snowmobiles and you know four wheelers and such. But anyway, um, the safety I'm thinking about is <coughs> radiation appearances. Yeah. People sleep in a house. Right. It takes a, it takes a long time. And it's a controversial thing. I know. It's it's whether it causes here. cancer or not, yeah. you know. So. Those lots obviously are going to be affected price-wise, and I understand that. You know, depends on if you believe in it or not. Yeah. Um, you know, it's if you like snowmobile. It's a great place to live. Yeah, and the record companies are typically willing to come out and measure those things, and you know, tell you what their what their thoughts are on it. Also, yeah. to help that with clients or so. Okay. I think that looking at it, I mean, this is an incredibly involved, I mean, <laughs> and, and I don't think any of us are foolish to think that we can fully understand this to what it needs to be, so, and I'm trying to think about how to do this most efficiently, but in my mind, this is going to have to get a, a third party review, you know, to go over this, yeah. and I'm hoping when we open the public session, if that brings up any questions, it helps alleviate sure. that. Cause, and, I, and I recall that being as how we always did this when we did the subdivisions. Um, and yeah, what would be the third part of the you want to use? You know, the White Mountain's been doing a lot of them. Yeah, I think, I think Norway review, Norway plans reviews White Mountains, and White Mountains reviews Norway plans. Right. Um, there, I mean, there certainly is as qualified as everyone is. Um, and well, it's people that are in the business that have experience at it that know where the uh, well, submerged logs are. Yeah, and, yeah, and, yeah. And, and the shoal water. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Well, if if I can, uh, add sure. Mr. Chairman, uh, although I don't disagree with some of your your, your the process sure. of the town and everything. Um, you know, the, the storm water, which is what that very large manual is which in front of you. Been, been reviewed by the DES, yes. I know. Yes. <laughs> and, and, and it exceeds the town standard. So I, 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 you know, although, you know, White Mountain's more than willing, welcome to review it. I, I think, you know, if, in my opinion, uh, in the past when we've had White Mountain review Norway Plains stuff, like for instance, Emory Farms. Um, they pretty much said it meets AOT standards, it's better than pound standards, and, and you know, there, there's always two or three little things. Mm -hmm. I'd like, I'm sure, sure you guys sit there and make sure you find the two or three little things. Um, you know, the, the challenge for us is, you know, one of our jobs is to make sure mm -hmm. we don't expose the town to liability. Um, I, I know it's a pain and I know it's expensive, um, but it, and, and again, the board's going to talk about this, but it's important to get, you know, for us to get it right and make sure we get the eyes done, and the T's crossed, and such and so forth. Um, but what's the board feel about that? I agree. Third party review. We don't want to go there. Like, right. We don't have that. It's a big mm -hmm. one. The way with well to look at this thing intelligently and say, okay, it's fine. We need to have some technical people take a look at it and say that to us. Jack, what's your thoughts? Yep. In towns that have a full-time planner on the staff, it provides a resource that we, in our small town, don't have. That's and correct. So, you, so things like that pretty well, much have, need, need to go to an outside. And, and the board in the past has had some guys who were surveyors who went for different companies, and we don't have that right now. Yeah, the level of but the benefit to going to a disinterested third party uh, to take an uh, objective look, regardless of the of the experience on the board, I think is is beneficial. I agree. I'm sure. Um, as a as a consultant that's done work for the town, on the flip side of the coin, 
Uh, it helps us if we have a very defined scope of services and not just here review this. Mm -hmm. um, if the board could have a discussion about what areas they might be wanting to have focused on, whether it's you know, you know, the geometry, the of the subdivision, or is it the drainage that the board's concerned about? You know, just it, it helps helps so us. That's, as, that's a very good point. You know, and not yeah. have drainage and slopes. You know, you know, not have a you know wide open. What, what, are you, what are you looking for? I think his point is very well taken. That this, which is the AOT, has been signed off by the engineer and reviewed by the DES, who I'm sure has their own engineers and has gone over very well. So. To me personally, I have no question about this. I mean, the state's pretty thorough. So that's that's my thought. I mean, for us, I think it's more of the, uh, as Jack said, the, some of the drainage, just the concepts, the, I, I think it needs a quick overview. Mm -hmm. So, you know, make sure we're, we're within where it should be and where the regulations stated from the town and so on and so forth. I wouldn't say, Let's dig this very deep. He does this enough that I'm sure he knows what we're talking about. Um, and I think your point is you know, giving them some scope to, to be the things for you. But that I feel good about. I don't know what you guys, how you guys feel about it. But. Well, like you said, the state usually is pretty thorough. So, but, you know, just a general overview by White Mountain, if that's what we choose, that would be. Like yeah, because it's been engineered by the power company yet at all. Well, the the power service for the lots, you mean, Jack? Mm -hmm. No. Mm -hmm. uh, they have not, we've not issued a work order. Just because and it's going to have to be in the ground, so it's going to have to be. Right, <coughs> so, so a work order will have to be established and submitted right. through. It, like uh, Mary Beth says, that we've gotten the joint use agreement to allow for the road to go underneath their, and through, and through their easement, so right. that, that's been reviewed. Uh, we provided, you know, cross sections showing how high the poles are, where the wires are, with the proposed grades underneath them. All that's been done. <coughs> um, and we're going to have to clear up as well the utilities on whether it's required to be mm -hmm. So, um, can I have a motion to um, continue to date certain? Yes. Um, until we get the report back from White Mountain Survey on a basic going over of the drainage, um, slopes, you know, the time itself, excluding the AOT, and um, get their feedback. And then I feel like at the next meeting we can start going down that checklist. And we'll, we'll, not the next meeting, the next meeting is in two weeks. No, the, the next meeting we keep coming back. Yeah, okay. it's certain. Which would be? Well, I don't know what is on White Mountain's plate, so I would say the earliest would be four weeks, which is May 2nd. I'm just not sure that they can do it by then, or May 16th is two weeks after that. That would give six weeks. And they'd probably want to see uh, see my minutes, and that could be like up to another week until next Wednesday or Thursday. Mm -hmm. I can get them done soon, I know. So, your preference? Yeah, we're going to do that as well. So, I'm, I'm sorry I jumped again. <laughs> <laughs> All right, can I have a motion to open the uh, public session? I Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Does anybody have any questions? I do. Sure. Yes, sir. Name and address. Uh, Dave Hager, 20 Federal Corner Road. My only concern is we're, our lot is across the street, down towards the central, uh, the general store a bit. And I, I'm a little concerned about all those septic systems and the, uh, the well that would be required to feed all those houses on my well. <laughs> it would be an effect. How do we go about knowing that? Well, the septic systems go through the DES, and you know they have to do a they have a pretty high standard for what they have to be. Mm -hmm. they, they have to be able to document that they work. Yeah. Um, well, these are you know there's these are all individual wells, so you're looking at you know 20 wells. Basically. You're not going to suck all my water away. Well, I, <laughs> yeah, no way, no one. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
Um, it's a concern, that's all. I, I've heard of crazy things. I've heard of wells you know, going up, I've heard of wells going down, I've heard of, you know, you, you just don't know until that happens. And I, I don't think I've heard a lot of it ever happening, but mm -hmm. God knows anything's possible. Mm -hmm. so. And we're on the right other side of the wall. Well, this is Gene Macy and Carl Newberger. We're on where the um, stone wall is. We're on the opposite side of that, which is right We're on the uh, right here. Wall. The right next to lot one. Right here. Okay. Right here. Yeah. Okay. Um, my concern is, is that I have from 97, <laughs> the plan from 97, the, st the road is in the same spot that it was planned for the last time? Yes. That hasn't been changed? Yes. Okay. No. What, what the, the current um, Mary Beth and, and Gary are planning on doing is actually cutting a lot of that hill down to provide a better lot and better visibility coming out of it. So it okay. Okay. And the, the, there's an additional uh, lot from this was 19 when it was in 97. Can right. you show me where the additional <laughs> lot was? It, 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 yeah, well, mostly they're down at the end because the road got longer where it will oh, get okay. more lots. But actually, the, to address your question, the original plan that you have in front of you had two lots that were in this corner, and now it's one. Okay. Uh, so we've actually reduced the number of lots near your your property. Where we are, and, and, and we've extended added, it on the other correct. end. That's correct. Okay. That was there, it. That there was, yeah, there were two lots in this like corner, that. and now it's one one larger lot. Okay. So the, I imagine the soil here is very good. Sand and gravel, because mm -hmm. Steve, you're on the back side of that, right? Yeah. So. Okay. So what is the what is the zone that that's in and the lot size in that zone? Is it medium density or is it low density? Medium, medium density. density. One acre. Lot size? One, One acre. acre. Oh, excuse me. Steve Hunter. <laughs> that this is all off. <clears throat> Whenever possible. Okay. It's so possible. It's possible. Whenever possible. Right. I think you've got around. Whenever possible. 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 My question really, a couple of questions would be the whole well thing, you know, just saying we'll see is not really, doesn't really comfort me because if something does happen, it, like, I don't really know much about wells. So like, what, are, what is the likelihood that adding 20 houses in there <clears throat> could give problems to the people that, because I mean, my house is about a mile from the general store and I think there's 16 or 17, you know, like you're obviously doubling the amount of houses in a very small area. Um, so just saying that we'll see is not really, doesn't really give me much comfort. I mean. Uh, you know, we just trust that the DES, I guess, looks into it basically. It says there's enough groundwater, it's not going to, doubling the amount of houses won't cause any problems. Or Actually, I don't believe the DES looks into wells. Yeah. Uh, no. So if there, if there ends up being an issue, it's just too bad. I mean, at that point, it's a civil, yeah. you know, civil matter. Okay. Um, I, I guess that, that kind of goes to my, my main kind of point. I mean, I would say that my wife and I are opposed to this, not necessarily the idea of someone putting a subdevelopment in on their land but 20 lots you know i can't speak for everyone but we moved to federal corner road because of the low density <clears throat> i think you're talking the first 20 houses it's something like five acres average you know some people are more some people are less so you're, you're adding 20 houses in here uh, i think the whole federal corner if i remember correctly is about 30 houses and it's you know almost two miles before you hit the uh, william lawrence camp so to add 20 on a 3,000 foot road just it seems to me to be in, like too dense for that area, personally. I mean, my driveway is 1,200 feet, so you're talking two and a half driveways, you're gonna put 20 houses, it just seems, personally, I, you know, I can't speak for everyone, but it just seems too dense for me. Um, 
and the well the well issue is obviously something I didn't even really think about until it was brought up, but that would obviously be a major concern if, if it is, or maybe it's not. I don't know much about wells, but I would. Uh, the only thing I'll say about the well, and I by no means a well expert, mm -hmm. but given what the soils are right there, mm -hmm. I don't think there's going to be an issue. Sure. Because it's a giant underground river, more than likely. Yeah, I mean it is wet so in that area. I mean, yeah, that's why it's all that, wet. So. That's why all that sand yeah. and stuff yeah. is there. Any information about the aquifer in that area? Would anybody have that information? Well, some in my, yeah. Huh? Yeah. The state has it someplace in their database. So. But that the zone this is in is allowed for one acre zoning. Mm -hmm. Sure. So yeah, I have no doubt that this is they allowed. Can probably it's, it's put permitted, yeah. Five, six more in there. Mm -hmm. But the zone is one acre zone. Sure. Your lot is one acre zone. Mm -hmm. Just out of curiosity, does anyone know? Is there any repercussion if you had a well and your neighbor and your well will drive? I don't know. It's pretty hard to prove that. Yeah, yeah it is. Yeah, it's it's really hard. Hard. We don't own it underground. Yeah. I mean, it's like when someone blasts two doors away and all of a sudden you're well across the Yeah. I didn't. Yeah. Yeah. If, it, if so. there was information available about the aquifer underneath that land, he still said the state may have to do that. <laughs> that would be a good indication of what kind of aquifer there is, if there is one, where you, what you're drawing from. Yeah. I, again, I. Something like that, it's much more traceable. I mean, if they're blasting oh, yeah. oh, certainly. a quarter of a mile away and your well caves right. in the same day, that might be a red flag. Yeah. <laughs> mm. My other question, too, would be when, at what point does the town take over maintaining the road? Or do they never, do we never pay for it? The town's not required to, it's voted on at town meeting. So the town would have, the town would get together and say, do we want to take over this road? In in the meantime, it's up to the property owners to plow it. And yes. So the potholes, they they take care of the whole road, huh? Yep. The town doesn't have to. Mm -hmm. It goes to town meeting and the town votes, and if they choose to take it over, sure, they take it over. So I guess what I'm kind of again getting at is, if two lots get sold and there's two houses, and they would go to the town, I mean, it wouldn't it wouldn't be cost effective for we'd be maintaining a three thousand foot road by taking in you know two houses right. worth of taxes. Yep. There'd be so, a law article. Right. Right. At the town meeting, yes. the town, yep. they would have the to be 100% complete as well. Yeah, I mean, 100%, everything's got to be done, right? Not, not so much houses have to be all built. The roads, the roads got to be. No, the drainage and everything has to be 100% done. Sure. You'd probably get a pretty good chunk of time before that's built out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, that, that sounds good, except I'll be listening to yeah, construction for the next 10 years, you know, so that's hey, another part of it. But What we were talking about earlier was these subdivisions. It's the, you know, the down the road of the subdivision, nice mm -hmm. Baxter Woods, and it's it was it was there when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. There's still lots where yep. that are that are open. Yeah, and it was a this one this Durgan Road, I think, has one too, right? Or, I mean, even that two pack lane, that one's pretty old. I think there's still some lots in there too. Yeah. But I mean, again, that doesn't that doesn't make it better because I would rather one summer all the houses go up and be done, but. It's, you know, you get 20 lots and it's going to be more than you sold every day. It works for me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it won't happen, though. And, you know, we'll be listening to construction for 10 years or more, but, you know, it is what it is. I, I, my, I mean, for me, I'm so far from anybody right now. This puts eight lots, I think, closer than probably any lots are now. Uh, maybe there's one Mike and Shirley down by the road. They might be, you know, about the same distance as those lots, but um, obviously adding eight lots, you know, I don't know the exact distance, but those are all pretty close you know I guess when you when you live in a town you don't think that's close but when you live in the middle of the woods it seems close so those, those are just my concerns but yeah you're pretty removed up there yeah absolutely yeah oh, well. <laughs> no we like it I mean that's you know, obviously that's why we moved here but. John D and this whole house um anybody else anybody else have questions so 51. Can I get a motion to close the public session? All those in favor? Aye. 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 I apologize because we have to reopen it because we're going to be just a few days. So if I have a motion to reopen the whole thing, I won't have to go in and buy the whole chunk on my side of the power line. You can continue to go over and just leave them all in. Thanks to the survey to review the drainage slope. 
excluding ALT, and yeah, uh, yeah, I'm just going to get this basic one. Yeah, basic one. Yeah, all those all those yes. Yeah, it's nice. Really nice. Yeah. Yeah. So we get to meet him. You have to pick a date okay. to a date certain. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> I, 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 would suggest, I would suggest no less than six weeks. Yeah. I'd say May 16th. May 16th. May. And, and then, if that's not enough time, it can get continued to get right. I think four weeks from today, that's, 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 well. that's dead on arrival. So that's, uh, I'm going to request the cost of a COA as well. Construction yeah. observation agreement at the same time when it goes to White House. Okay. So they know what the fee is. Let's do this again so it's very clear. <laughs> All right. We need two motions. One motion to refer the plans to White House Survey for a third party review, as well as a COA. COA. Yep. The review is to exclude the AOT, to review the drainage and the slope. Uh, and a general overview of the subdivision itself. So I have that motion. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And then can I have another motion continue to a date certain, which would be May 16th? Is that mm -hmm. good? Yes. So moved. All, all those in favor? Aye. 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 So, do you guys understand uh, just so what we're doing? Yeah. Okay. The, the butters, do you guys understand what we're doing? Mm -hmm. we're, we're just asking for some people okay. you know, to take a look at this. First of all, May 16th. Yes. Yes. They were probably the what is what is the next step? Thanks. 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 So we two months. Ago. Yeah, what, we, what we did was uh, this is really yeah. Oh yeah. So there's some events involved. Sure so thing. We <laughs> Third party engineering review it and make sure that the guys are going to be Whether or not you get that many they're going to give us feedback and they give us Steve Hunter, Site Plan Review Compliance Self-Storage Facility. Uh, just a quick rehash on what we're doing with this was two meetings ago, roughly. Yeah, two meetings ago. Um, I'd had people asking me what was going on with Steve's uh, project. Um, talked to Jack. Uh, Jack said you know, there was conditions of approval and stuff like that, which we went through at the last meeting. We'll go through them again. Uh, Jack said, and, you know, said, hey, we got potential an issue here. Jack said, hey, I, the uh, wording looks a little vague. So said, well, let's bring it in and talk about it and make sure everybody's on the same page on compliance and stuff like that. Gave just Steve a call. Steve said we were going to be doing it. Steve came in, um, kind of went through everything. Steve wanted Jack here out of the camera. So that brings us to tonight's meeting. Um, and um, so basically the issues, um, you know, I had questions raised about whether you were uh, 
um, renting out the building already or not, because if you were, uh, there, there was outstanding conditions uh, that had to be met. Some of them were zoning board conditions, some of them were planning board conditions. Um, but zoning board condition, the main one was a gate uh, that had to be constructed. Uh, um, yeah, so uh, one condition, a permanent gate to be installed that restricts access to tenants for having access to the general public. Um, in the minutes it went through, you know, different uh, electric gates, we discussed uh, those with the zoning board, and then the planning board again. We talked about power and you know what we were going to do and stuff like that. Um, the other issue uh, was a question about screening before a certificate of occupancy, um, about um, plants and stuff like that, about what we were going to do with that, and whether it was it was going to be needed for the final inspection uh, and then the last part when i was just looking at it on whether it was being rented or not was just that we came back to the zoning planning board to have the berm removed um, which you got approval for but it looks like i'm not saying that that's what's happening that the plan is to put a parking lot down below um, and it may not be but that's just what it appears and the only concern there was that there's a certain amount of coverage you're allowed on the lot and it would be I mean looking at it I'm going to guess substantially over it um, so uh, we talked about this some at the last meeting um, as far as what you know how people remember the interpretation of the gate and the screening and stuff like that that brought us here tonight so we're off it doesn't well my opinion it doesn't state the type of gate it just says a gate that prohibits the access to non-users. So I believe whether it's powered, non-powered, all that, it should be closed and locked or at least closed and have to unhitch it to get in. Um, doesn't state what kind of gate. Well, doesn't say motorized, remote control, keypad. That's fine, Jack, but if it's not locked, it's not going to prohibit access by the general public. You said it doesn't have to be locked, but not, well, it says here if that you, prohibiting access to the general public, it correct. should be locked. Not necessarily locked. It could be latched, not locked. You have to get out. People aren't just going to go out there and open it and drive it, I don't believe, but I don't know. It's just, I, I, and I know on the planning board it was phased. The planning board, it, it, approval it, yeah, phased, if I there's remember. a phase right. on the drainage as the buildings were built. Correct. So we through the, yeah. the question was on the screening. The screening was, yes, it was Before from a berm fence, to yeah. a fence. Well, and I believe with the fence, it should create the same line that was drawn out when the berm was there for blocking the building. Right, but the requirement by the planning board was screening as needed. Correct. And that it was before required before the final inspection. So the, the point is, right now, we don't have any screening, and which doesn't matter at all right. if he's not running you know, the buildings out because it's still under construction. The trigger is when you start putting the building into use mm -hmm. and you, have, you still have conditions of approval from the zoning board planning board, and that's where the issue arises. If it's not being used, then there is no issue. But as soon as it starts being used, then you have the conditions that you have to meet you know, that are granted, one of which is Screen, screen, which correct. in the minutes we talked about doing it by planning board, you know, coming back to the planning board, mm -hmm. but in the notice of decision, it's so decided, go back and look it's at decided by you, which is how it's done there. The gate, I don't think it's unclear at all. I mean, I was at the um, zoning board meeting and they were pretty clear about wanting you know, limiting access and gates, and we talked about power and everything else during the planning board portion, so I don't think that's big at all, whether it's a keypad, a card, a whatever, I mean, you know, whatever works, yeah. Um, the zoning board chairman is sitting out there, I don't know if he'd be of any help. Sure. Mark? Busy. Busy. <laughs> is this the part of the meeting you wanted to sit in on? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. I'm no. pretty sure. Yeah. Sorry about that. Mark, the questions arising about uh, the zoning board decision and condition approval was a gate to limit access in and out of the yes. 
in and out of the property. Um, so the, the which if the again if it's not being used this doesn't matter. But if it is, then we have conditions. What was the intention of the zoning board with the gate? The primary intention was to limit uh, general public access to the site when the business was in operation. And so uh, the reason, that, as you may well know, uh, Zimmerman uh, first brought before, and uh, the board turned him down four to one. And, and I was at that meeting, and it was that was really a sticking point for the, the zoning board. It made or break, and it, Zimmerman did not budge. He refused to put in any sort of a gate and insisted through his agent that it be kept open to the public 24-7. And the board would not approve that. So the approval here for uh, this time was a permanent gate to be installed that restricts, restricts access to tenants, prohibiting access by the general public. We didn't specify what type of gate. We did talk about an electronic one with ours. And uh, after discussion with uh, the applicant and others, we did drop that. So we just wanted a gate that would prevent access by the general public. But preventing access is more than just having a latch on a gate. That's correct. I mean, yeah. it, that's, that, that has to be something that only people that are tenants can have the ability to. And what do you own? Yeah, well, ha have the ability to, to, to open. I would, I would agree. Um, I know we talked about electricity and stuff. We did. Um, and that was my impression of what it was, was going to be, because that's normally what you see at self storage facilities. You know, you, well, an automatic operating gate is more convenient for somebody that's running a locker than one that you have to get out and open it. But uh, and so our conversation is along those lines. But that's not to say that that there's a, a that out of this board there was a requirement that it being electrically operated or have a remote keypad or something like that. But clearly, the, I don't recall any discussion that suggested just a, a what, what I would call a window dressing gate. Uh, uh, I agree. We we were consider you know the, the things we were considering were before gates we, that would. Before we go farther, yeah. Steve, are you intending to put an electronic gate on? Um, that may answer just the question. I I have a different gate at home and I have um, purchased a I what you call it an automatic thing with a remote control keypad okay but I, I have purchased that it's in my shop at the moment it seemed like a better way to do it was just yeah. see yeah. what was going on um, as far as the screening um, you know again I was at the zoning board meeting for Steve, I was at the zoning board meeting for Paul's, you know, um, you know, and to me, what I, you know, what I, originally there was a burn and you know, that was there and it's permission to be gone. Um, you know, the question is, is if we don't have those trees and burn and we see, you know, what we, or the trees anyway to block it, you know, when we're allowing the property to go into use, you know, what are we setting for a precedent down the line as yeah. we have other applications that come to allow a property to go into use, you know, before the conditions are met. You know, one of the conditions is screening to be appropriate, determined by the codes officer, and we're not, you know, have we met that condition? I mean, there's no screening right now, so clearly we haven't met that condition. I mean, so. Well, there's some screening now. There is some fence. It's not finished. Right. And there has to be some support and back wall so it doesn't wash out to be completed with the final grading, I would assume. But is the property being used now uh, without CL? Which, again, if the property is not being used, this doesn't matter. So, Steve, are you using Do the you garage? issue COs for garages? I order a construction completion. So, um, I never was devious in my application. I put it in its phases on my application. I came back a year later and asked about putting up my fence to start my screening so that I could rent my units. Yeah, absolutely. And the planning board at that meeting said, great, yep, the fence will work. 
I, I wasn't being devious about asking for that. Um, so. No, and, and I don't think you are. I, we're just, if you're putting the and power. I, and I've not finished my project, so I have not finished my drainage swale on the backside. I have not finished my fence screening yet. I haven't finished my paving yet. I had, I had my paving done Labor Day last year from a gentleman who was up there and measured it all out. Um, my recollection of last fall was it rained almost every other day and then we had snow around the 1st of November. So I didn't get my paving done. And none of it I am a service to the community at this point. And none of it matters. And I'm not if infringing not. on anything, fire but department, schools, or anything in town. But and none of it matters if you're not renting it out because you're not putting the property into service. But when you have conditions, you, me, whoever, you know, we have to meet them. And so do other applicants and stuff like that. We're, I mean, we're trying to clear up, you know, questions about what the conditions actually were. And the planning board doesn't do enforcement. You know, we're trying to clear that up. So if you're not renting out the property, then you're not required to meet the conditions yet. But if you if you put the property into use, then the conditions that you have approved, you know, were approved with, have to be met. And so that's why we're here. Well, everything that I'm using has been inspected and built to, to proper standards. I mean, uh, proper codes or whatever you call that. I'm sure the buildings are, yes. It, it's and just my driveway the, cut, I've got my driveway cut from the state. Like I say, I didn't get my hill paved last fall. I don't think they can pave this spring yet. Um, I didn't want to put a gate in until I had my paving done. And, and none of it matters if you're not using the property. So if you're renting the property, then you have the conditions to meet by the two boards. And this isn't, you know, and it's, it's the same for everybody. Okay, glad you said that. So, yeah. so that's where we're at, and we asked you last time, and you said you wanted Jack here. So what do you want me to do? Are you renting the property? Yes, I am. Okay. So. All right. Um, and then the last part, just as far as the coverage, was I don't know what you're doing with the bottom. I mean, you could be doing nothing. I have no idea. I could put a lawn in, couldn't I? Yeah, you absolutely could, because that'd be permeable. But you have a certain coverage to work with, right? You know, which what you're yeah. allowed, and just be aware that if you take that and you I'm, put I'm in fully a aware of that. Lot, that you're going to have a coverage issue. And I didn't. I wanted to tell you that before you went ahead and did a big project and make sure you understood. So, which I'm sure you do. But, so, uh, according to the approval that the DBA gave him that if he's renting it, we need to see the copies of the contract. We have that. Well, you have that. We have that. We have that. We got that one time. Okay. Okay. We get that when he his, got his approval from the last chairman. Yeah. So, if I'm interpreting this right, so that we knew, you knew that he was renting the matter already when he got it? I have a question. No, we did not. Oh, okay. Do you have any time? I know we can't mother nature, mother nature. Any timeline on the paving? Are you like first on list or you don't know? I'm not a clue on that one. I, you know, when the fall came, I, I'm I know that. It was, it was wet last fall. I know we were trying to do it. And then this done. started, so I, I really don't have. So we don't have a competence. Contract. May. He yes, did, yeah. no, with the tents that are being rented? No. No, we just need we a just call. Need a sample. Okay. Yeah. A sample. Yeah. Okay. We don't need no. Okay. Um, okay. So, Steve, thank you for answering that. I think so. Yeah. Um, I have another issue to bring up when you're done. Not a problem. When you're done with it. Not a problem. Um, so, what I think we should do, uh, we're not an enforcement board. That's not what we do. But this was trying to clarify, you know, a question about it. Um, what I would recommend we do, because the goal is not to, I mean, the goal is always compliance with any applicant and such and so forth. There's no point in going out and being like, let me, you know, make your life miserable. So I would have a motion that we um, reviewed the minutes, talked with Steve um, at uh, the <coughs> compliance of his conditions, 
and uh, recommend to the codes officer that he meet with Steve and find a mutually, you know, you can't put a gate in and the ground's frozen or stuff like that, but let's come up with a plan to bring it into compliance as quickly as possible. So I'm not sure how you guys feel about it phase phrase that way, but that's kind of what I would recommend. Repeat that. I would make a motion that we've reviewed the minutes of the zoning board and planning board site plan of, of uh, approval. Um, found that Steve is outside, is out of, uh, uh, okay. outside of compliance of his conditions of approval and recommend to the codes officer that he meet with Steve to find out in, you know, the way to most quickly bring that to within compliance, you know, within the near future so that no further action is necessary. I'll make that motion. I second it. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Steve, what do you got? So, I abstain just because I can't vote on some of my so. oh, yeah. No, because you're on my side. <laughs> so I have a little bit of information that I'd like to share with the board here and see what is your thoughts and comments. So we're going to go up onto Mountain Road. Um, Tax map 4638 has a storage building on it, six bay storage shed on it, owned by Matt Young Revocable Trust and Thomas Young Revocable Trust, bought in 2014, D3126, blah, blah, blah. Has a storage building on it, right? There's a shed there, sure. Yep. So that's an existing lot that has a shed on it that to my knowledge, never went through the ZBA for special, it's a low density residential zone and storage buildings are permitted by special exception. I don't know that you ever went through the ZBA and then I guess you would continue on as you made, Justin, continue on to the planning board, the site planning board, to have that building there. You're using it, I see stuff in there. What's the address again? It's, I don't know what the address is, but it's I up on Mountain Road. I actually don't think it has an address. Yet. That's an address? Yeah. It's not a business. It's a storage building. It's not a business, though. We have lots of storage buildings in town. They get built for the owners of the property put their own things in them. This is a separate lot. Mm -hmm. Correct. We it have has a storage building. We have a whole bunch of those in town. But the town regulations that you people enforce mm -hmm. says you have to have a special exception to have a storage building on a lot. If you those, don't have a residence on that lot. If it was a commercial storage building, it absolutely would. Right. That is absolutely true. No, Justin said he was storing his own stuff in there. If you look in the zoning, he has a residence that's on in the his commercial, lot. That's in the commercial uses. If you look under the zoning. He's, he's medium density residential. Right, but he has a commercial use for that. He came in for commercial use to store his commercial equipment in there. In the zoning on the page, it's under commercial uses and it has storage buildings in different zones, and every one's a special exception, but that's right. a commercial use. We have, there's a whole bunch of garages in there. Oh, it says storage store. buildings. Which is a garage. Yeah. Right. As special exception for in every zone. For a commercial <coughs> use. Only, I don't know, I, can you show that to me? Yeah. That storage yeah, buildings. Yep. Right, F, commercial use, and under that is storage buildings. Under residential uses, which are residential uses, there's no storage building on the residential use. So you can have a garage for your own personal stuff on a separate property that you own. But if you're going to use that garage commercially, it requires a site plan review. It's I listed still, under I the commercial uses. I 
figured you'd sweep it under the rug. Can I add my two cents? Sure. Yeah. I'm just wondering, what is the regulations and what type of business requires a gate and fence and what type don't? None, but if it's a conditional of approval, it's but a But why, why is that? I mean, I go by these storage places all over the place. Most of them are wide open, right? so people can see them. The ZBA put can, that well, condition I, I, well, I'm, 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 I probably should be asking you, Mark. That most of them want their buildings visible. I mean, you go by them, Ossipi, Tamworth, Alton, Wolfboro, Moultonboro. They surround us at everywhere. And yet I see very few that have a gate, that have a fence of any sort. And what type of business requires a gate, and what type doesn't require a gate? There is nothing in the zoning specifically related to gating and where it or when it would be applied. I can tell you that the board considered, certainly a majority of the board, um, at when Zimmerman came and strongly felt that it set a bad precedent for a brand new business to open up that would potentially be 24-7 to the public. That in this particular area, that was not suitable for what the town wanted. As, as the ZBA interpreted the town. That now, vote was four to one. And now, that, you could go potentially 24-7. And I, I have an issue with that, because how many people are going to be moving their furniture and stuff at midnight, or 2 a.m.? I mean, it's, essentially, people are going to move their stuff. They're going to do it on Saturday morning, Saturday afternoon, when they have the time. It's, sure. It's not like there's going to be 50 people going in there. It might, one or two people at a time. I mean, that might be a crowd if there's two people in there at the same time loading or unloading something. I mean, it just, it seems like it's such a low impact business that to have all, you know. My, my opinion of that, I was at all those meetings. Yes. Yeah. There was a couple people on there that figured that since it was a storage place, there was going to be things brought up there from any old person in the world and dumped out back and that would be it. I think there were a couple. But that's not people. true if you look at all these stories. I know that, but I'm just saying on the yeah, board of no. the ZBA, there was a couple of people that thought that, so they figured a gate would take care of that. Which is nonsense. The surveillance camera would yeah. not take care of that. In my right. opinion. But the gate, that gate's not going to keep the renters out. They're gonna, no. They could be there 24-7. No. Exactly. No, there was, no, there was just so a gate that was there. So the gate's there, only going to keep the riffraff out. Right. And I don't, you know, I mean, it's something, bro. Gate will only keep the owners present. Yeah, right. I mean, it was it was something that was important to, Bob if Kef. I remember right, it was important to, actually Bob, I think it was important to, I think there was a couple of neighbors at, at Zimmerman's hearing that it was important to, they were not at Steve's hearing, but I think that the, the fact that it was important to them, it carried over to Steve's hearing. Whether it has a gate or not, I mean, I don't care whether it has a gate or not, the only thing I care about is you know, we have conditions and we have to, you know, we have to well, I think the meet them. Thing was an anti Zimmerman thing, not an anti storage. Yeah, building. probably. Yeah. I mean, it was his but project was pretty the nice. example for you, Matt, that storage building on the county road, a new road, whatever it is, your boat storage building. Yep. What's the difference? That's a commercial use, it's not screened. It's no, got no it's, gate. It's not, but it's been there since like 1952. Still. You know, so. <laughs> it's grandfather. You know, I mean, it, it's just, I don't see where the line is that, okay, this one has to have a gate and a fence. It, there is no line. Well, there's there's no line. Just it was the decision of the ZBA. Yeah, yeah. So, so there is no definition of screening, and there is no requirement for screening. It's an arbitrary decision by the sitting board. It's a condition. Yeah. Yeah. My only argument is, why do some people have to do a site plan review and other ones that move the highway department down by the general they store? They came in, they haven't come back. Supposed yeah, to but you guys in. put me through three months of stuff and I couldn't get my building up in time. It was a winter. And they're out of, and they are out of, uh, they're in violation. Right, but so what's the problem? And they just moved that? before I, they did it. You know, they didn't even attempt to. I know, but we're trying to do the right thing here. And I know. And you it's did. It's easier. Right. And you did. Well, it's easier to see yeah. forgiveness than it is to ask permission, yeah, I guess. Right. You know, exactly. that's, that's my only com it's, complaint. This is a good conversation, actually. It's so, I mean, it's so for all of us. Learned from. I mean, you did. You had to jump through some hoops. I mean, I don't think we went out of our way. No, you guys were fine, but I, I did my steps I had to do. Yep. But why is it that somebody else 
They're not. Doesn't in, have to do the steps. They are not in compliance. Forgiveness is definitely easier than permission. And, that's, and I've visualized that here yeah. in the and, last two years. And to be honest with you, as I start, started off saying, we are not an enforcement board. Right. We do dirt and we do compliance and we do, you know, not, you know, whether something is as it was presented and such and so forth. That's the selectman and that's Jack. Yeah. So. If it, if it was a condition of the ZBA's opinion, we have to follow that or else the town could be liable if we don't. In plain English, am I right, Chuck? Yeah, but you know, change of use is change of use. So if nobody complains, is nobody going to enforce it? Well, it, that's sort yeah, of um, it, I don't care about the gate and all that I stuff. Mean, that's yeah, not my argument. You're to absolutely me. right. I mean, the app, the person you're talking about is out of compliance. Okay. I mean, absolutely. And that brought to the attention of the owner. Yeah. So there's no set rules on a lot of this stuff. It's a matter of the board's arbitrary decision at the mm -hmm. time. No, there's set rules. I mean, as far as gates and fences? Oh, not on gates no. and stuff. So if Steve would have put a gate in, and he put one in like an old railroad crossing with bells and whistles and bells going ding, 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 and up and down and flashing lights, <laughs> that would be fine. That actually, would be, that would be fine. But I think you that, one, that actually, would probably bother more people yeah, than actually, having no you, gate there you whatsoever. more than likely meet the, the compliance. Yeah, and I think you, you Steve, I, we can probably find one, you know, the railroad crossings are all gone. <laughs> so, but yeah, I mean, but, you know, I mean, it, it just seems... Zoning has very clear rules. You know, it's it's dirt, soil, change of use, intensification of use. You know, if it's not on the table of uses, it's not allowed, and therefore you have to go to the zoning board or you need a special exception. Can you go back and appeal a zoning board yep. decision? Yeah, yeah you, you can. can. Yeah. And say, you know? You can. Yeah, you can. You They've can. already run me through the ringer. You, you think can. I'm going to go back in front of him? I mean, Matt. Matt's on his own here in this whole debacle. He says he's got people behind him, but he won't mention names. Yeah. Will you? So, well, you went to mention names of people that have asked, you say many Steve, people. If, if they would like to come I could verify it me. if you gave me the names, but I, so I'm I assuming think, this is all you I think against my, me. I think my uh, complaint on this is enough. Nobody's oh, against you. I'll, I'll mention Everybody's against me, Tony. This is an example, this is an example of what I said a year and a half or two years ago when you got your survey back down and I said the problem with all the boards in this town is they think their job is to say no. And this is a board that's now trying to hinder me from going forward. What did this board no, say no to I, I said I was going to build it in phases, and I came back the first year to change things so I could progress, and everybody thought that was fine. Now all of a sudden I got another stumbling block. It's you know, not, I haven't finished it. I'm doing it in phases. It's not a stumbling block. It's just a condition that has to be met. But some of the things that were supposed to be done before you occupied the first phase haven't been done yet. No, we never we never stated that in that those things. We had phases, but we didn't say one had to be finished before stu two was started. None of that was done. I never had a time frame on things, and I was right here in front of the board when I got it changed from a berm to a fence because I'd like to rent some units. I had some interested parties. I'd like to rent some units to generate some income. I don't income. remember that conversation at all. But you, no, you have the no time. I don't remember that conversation at all. That, that screening, you no, the changing screening from the fence? I, I said because I would like to generate a little income. I did say that. You, you have no time frame. You could take multiple okay. years to build it. Thank you. But as soon as you put it into use, you have to meet your conditions. It's, it's the same for, you know, any application we get. I mean, we turned down, I mean, we had, uh, I forget their name, the, oh God, who was that? The people who kept sending it back and asking again. again. The Merrimack Valley Development. Merrimack Valley Development Corp has been before this board, I don't even know how many times. And they came back and they keep sending it in wanting us to sign off on their subdivision. Well, they had like six minor clerical things that needed to be changed. I mean, it was like showing a stop sign on the plan, you know, this, that. Nothing major. Would anyone probably have noticed that they weren't there? No, but they were a condition. And they still don't have their plan signed because they still need to give us these these items. I want to see you get your building up and running and renting it. God knows that's the business. You know, my family's been in a million years. I don't want to stop you from doing it. You know, but you, just like the other applicants, we got to meet the conditions. We got to do that. Because otherwise, the next applicant comes in here and says, hey, I want to do this, 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 and this. We give them condition X, Y, Z. And then they go off and they do whatever they want. And they say, you know, 
So it's, it's all the same brush. It's not us trying to beat you up. It's not me trying to beat you up. It's not Jack trying to beat you up. It's just conditions. So I apologize if you feel offended by it. Um, it's not my intention. It's not our intention. We're just you know, going down the road we have to go. We try to treat everybody the same and fairly, Jack. That's uh, Steve. I mean, that's what you try to do. Am I right, man? I mean, I, yeah. I mean, you know, 20 years from now, 30 years from now, we don't want people coming in here and say, what the hell did you do to this town? Well, we didn't follow up on the compliances. My argument about what you just said, that you're trying to treat everybody fairly, though, but I feel like I did my role in three months, but now I feel like I wasn't treated fairly because the other guy's getting away with it. Yeah, but we can't. Like, but when he, when out. they come before the board, I mean, I can't. I'm not in enforcement. I right. Can't, I can't make them come before the board. I don't have that authority. But so who penalizes them then? That would be the codes officer and the selectman. So, but if, when they're here, I mean, if he has conditions, I will. They have to meet the conditions. In that case, it could be interesting because they're already the property's already right. in use, you know, and stuff like that. So. <clears throat> So yeah, it's it's interesting, you know. but you're right. So half the time, people get away with stuff because nobody says anything. It doesn't. You know. I will say, usually, I found because I mean, we I do a fair number of projects. You know, that if you don't do it right, zoning wise and you know, planning wise and doing your surveys okay, and stuff, yeah. it nine times out of ten eventually catches up with you and it costs you more money than if you had just done it right. So based on that, how many, just curious, how many conditional approvals for gravel pits have you issued in the last month? What, four, four, five? Conditional right. approvals, right? Yep, they have. So a month, uh, two weeks from now, when they come in here to file their intent to excavate. They can't get it until are you gonna they, they can't get it until they get the approval, which means they have to finish the they, they need the application, which Leanne has, I believe, so. They do, but they need to meet their conditions first. Right. Right. So once, once, once the conditions get satisfied, so can you sign and you get signed off on? Your only thing you had, uh, your site plan was all set. So I think you have all the, actually I did just sign this tonight actually, didn't I? No, you didn't. You signed the conditional. Oh, did okay. you submit a s photographic inventory? I believe that's on the... That was on my conditions? I thought so. Yeah, it was. That's good. Don't... Well, yeah. Test pits on the application. Well, the, the interesting thing about the test pit is the test pit is not. It's not on the site plan. It's, it's on the application. It's a requirement for the app, the uh, excavation permit, oh. which is actually interesting. But it, so it's going to be kind of hard to buy any sand in town in the month, isn't it? I mean, I'll go walk the pits tomorrow. I don't care. Yo. Yes, it was a condition, Steve. Condition number four. Applicant shall submit a photographic inventory of the excavation area. Elevation shall be marked and depicted on the plan. And there wasn't any approved without conditions. Is all, that of, all of them had pretty right. much the same conditions. Right. A couple yeah. of them had something that, like Fenton had a restriction. Yeah, a bunch of neighbors. He's going to put a gate up. Yeah, he's got to do a gate. He's got to do this. He's gotta do because this. it's an easement. Well, yeah, I mean, until the conditions are met. I got, I mean, I it's none of my business, so and what is this isn't Ossipee, and this isn't Alton, but, I mean, everybody knows where Water Industries is, and I live in North Wolf Grove, and I can only think of one storage facility that has a gate, and that's the Route 28, right next to Trites or Millers, or whatever you want to call it, but, Auto I mean, all the way from Chamberlain's down to Alton, all the way to Chamberlain's has a gate. The one at the top of the hill? The you the reservoir? You got the one over in... I don't think I've heard that one over in the north side. Uh, and Chamberlain's, but they don't close it. But like Zimmerman's up in Austin, that huge one that he's putting up yeah. now, I mean, you can ride in there and count right. locks all right. night long if you want. Right. That's, 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 yeah, that was a condition of a board. It's just that it didn't work there. It wasn't a rule. That's what the zoning board wanted. They're all closer to the road, too. I mean, to me, personally, if I, it's not important to me. I mean, I don't see any difference between having a gated storage facility or not, but it, what I think doesn't matter because it was the right. zoning board. Could, could he have appealed that, that gate restriction requirement? Yes. Can he still repeal it? Or? At this point, 
It's easier to just put up a gate. I, I don't think so. Right, the gate. No, it's too high a field. Right? At well, this point, it's past us. You have to go to court. Yeah, okay. Right. That's what I thought. The zoning board knows what's going on. I mean, right. we, we drive by it all the time. Right. There is actually a gate there, and we know that the project isn't complete. But there's been nothing from the board internally that says, you know, we should take this up with the enforcement. Because from the zoning board's perspective, there is this condition. Yes, it was a condition, and there's no way anybody would get it through without, due to the opposition that it was uh, it faced. Yeah, I heard about that. <laughs> but from, from our perspective, uh, he's in compliance. He's technically compliant. We understand that a gate, and we did talk about an electronic gate, as I mentioned, and we dropped that. There's a gate there. We know there's another one coming when the paving is done. You know, it's the timing of when, when things get done and when you can ha have the work come in for the paper. Yeah, this time of the year, right? The weather is terrible. There's, there's no issue from the zoning board that I understand. Yes, we did place the restriction. If we didn't... We we didn't time, you could just do, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Go ahead. You could use like a combination lock and just give the renters the combo. We and then yeah. just, the thing yes. is locked. Whatever, we didn't even say what. You know, right. Whatever Jack and Steve, I mean... I, mean, I think what we're agreeing on as the board is yes, it's outside of the conditions. Jack, Steve, get together, make this into compliance as quick as possible. That's it. Any questions? Anybody? It does seem it does seem like the gate, just real quick, is more of a business decision. I mean, it's in his interest to put a gate because then the tenants are happier and they're more comfortable. It seems it seems just in the future that maybe the board shouldn't <clears throat> dictate business decisions so much as, and the thing is, it was that a condition. should be my decision. Yeah, it should be the business owner's decision. But it was a condition that you agreed to on the, on the same hand. So, you know, like you should have fought it probably at the time that it was being proposed as a condition. It wouldn't have flown. Yeah. So, I mean, that's the only way to get it through. But a gate does seem to me, be more of like a business owner thing. Again, this was at you know the zoning board level. Mm -hmm. That project has to go to the zoning board. Sure, yeah. To us. Yep. Yeah, I'm obviously stepping into the middle of this, so I don't know. I, I think the town should encourage businesses like that, not give them hoops to jump through. I work in Wolfboro a lot, and the people that the hoops that they make businesses jump through down here, a lot of them just throw in the towel and say, screw it, I can do this anywhere else, but I'm not going to do it in Wolfboro. Because I don't have to do this anywhere else, and we don't want Tuftonboro to be like that. Too. Well, they're real we're tough on right business. You ought to be right. encouraging businesses I, like that. To, I, to, to, I don't at all disagree you know? with you, but I will tell you that there's a good percentage of the population in Tuftonboro. Yeah, and most of those people who object to that have lived here for 10 years and they want I, to be the way they want it, which is I, the problem. I mean, I am. You know, no, obviously, we I had have all this stuff back where we came from. Let's have it here. Yeah. I, I say, why don't you move back there again? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> you know, the, the what limits business in Tuftonboro is that there, there's not a yeah. lot of demand I mean, for the it. The town is dying business-wise. Look at the empty stores and stuff that used, we used to have 25 years ago. And today, I mean, you know, what, what, what do you do? I don't, I don't know what the answer is, but Tony thinks that's make better. it easier. Hmm? Tony thinks that's better. What's well, better, Steve? You just said Tuftonboro is better than Wolfboro. As far as coming before any of the boards? Oh, it I is. We're a piece of cake. Come on. <laughs> but but the wrong direction. Yeah. Compared to what they had to do in Wolfboro, Steve? All right. Anybody got any questions before we move on to the next discussion item? All right. Steve, thanks for coming in. Need a motion to adjourn? No, I don't think I've got any. So, excavation operations site plan review submittal deadline uh, letters so to Bean and Holmberg. Uh, if you guys remember at the meeting, uh, uh, Jim Bean you know, wanted to submit his application to um, for the excavation permit. And at the time, you know, we were saying, hey, if we can meet the deadline, you're welcome to, but if you're not, such and so forth. When we looked, Jim cannot meet the deadline. He was eight days overdue, I think. Uh, so he got a certified letter saying, you have not met the deadline, such and so forth. 
and Mr. Holmberg, uh, which was the other pit that had an active uh, ex permit to excavate uh, within town, also got a certified letter saying. He hasn't yet. He has not yet? He's going to. He is going to. Okay. Um, anybody have any questions about that? Okay. Uh, Planning Board Council. Um, Mr. Murray, actually, interestingly, he was going to retire, and he, I talked to him on a few occasions when we had the request um, legal opinions. Uh, it's kind of indicated that he is kind of retired and not really retired, and he keeps the clients he wants, and it's kind of sounded like Tuckerborough he likes having as a client for the planning board. Um, it's about well, and so the board did uh, several months ago want to look into other council. So what I've done is I've contacted pretty much the surrounding towns around the lake to see who they use so we could get a variety. And I did reach out to some cities hoping maybe we could get some council from the city areas. And unfortunately, Portsmouth, Concord, Nashua, Manchester, they have their own council on staff. So that wasn't really effective. However, I received, I believe, five referrals and I've contacted and ha had contact with four of them, and I've received information from the Mitchell Municipal Group, and I'm still awaiting information, but I have made contact with them and they're going to get me up. What my plan is, is I will put it all into one email, send it out, send out the links to all of their websites so that in between meetings, the board at their leisure can review the websites, the bios of the attorneys, and then we can have a discussion as to whether or not we want to continue retaining Roger Murray or if we want to change counsel. So we should have that probably in maybe two weeks if I can get, I've only gotten an email from one, but the others said they were coming, so I'm hoping. So that's the plan, unless you want me to change direction, let me know. Okay, that actually sounds pretty good. Um, I think in the past we've talked about it, talked about it. I'm really a fan of using land use attorneys for land use. Mm -hmm. And um, well, I think actually Roger's incredibly thorough. Uh, you know, I don't know how much longer he's going to be doing this. Bruce that. Marshall, one of those. No. Would you like me to contact him? Yeah. Where is he out of? Uh, Upton. No, it's uh, down towards Concord. If anybody else has a land use attorney they like, preferably with municipal experience from the municipal side. Just forward me the name. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There was that one the uh, engineer recommended um, at Upton. Yeah, I his name. Who was the engineer? I could contact the engineer. Uh, it's right the the horizons. That engineering. And somebody else mentioned that that gentleman was very good yeah. and reasonable. Um, anybody have anything to add on Planning Board Council? Can you just say Tyler Phillips? The son. Junior the son. The son. The son. Yeah. Um, the third of these. Yes. Master Plan. Did you guys get a copy of Leanne's email? It was great. No, they did not. Oh. <laughs> so, but you, there is an email from a Jeff Hayes. Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah. That I would like everybody to look at. Where is it? Right here. Over here. So I, do you want me to speak? Yes, please. So on Tuesday evening, I reached out to Susan Slack and sent an email um, asking her for an update on the status of the land use chapter um, because we haven't heard from her in quite a long time and she still has not responded however in the meantime Karen the Board of Selectmen secretary has received correspondence from Jeff Hayes from LRPC stating that he never had a copy of the renewal contract so um, it appears as though they must have lost the contract the signed contract and so Jeff just got back today he sent this email out um, to Karen and CC Bill, myself, um, I'm not sure who else he CC'd, basically saying that to date they have, I don't have an email in front of me, 
to date they have completed uh, the development of a future land use map, review and comments on chapter three, which they have, chapter five, facilities and services, which they haven't, and attended one of two planning board workshops, which is accurate. Um, the future land use map that they said that they've developed, we've never seen it. We have no idea what it looks like. They're, I don't even know if it's a draft format or if it's in final format. She was supposed to be working on the land use chapter and submit that. I had reached out to her in the last year, over a year since the contract. I've reached out to her on six emails asking for a status update. I have received one email. Um, and we outlined a plan to go to public hearing in February. And I had to reach back out in January, January 30th of this year to inquire the status because February is coming up and I needed to post for public hearing. And she did not respond to me. I did not schedule the public hearing. We haven't even received a draft of either the map or the chapter. And I'm not sure, but I'm wondering if they're using this as an excuse that they didn't know that it was extended as to why they haven't worked on it. But it doesn't explain why it hasn't been worked on for nine months prior. So this is just where we're at. I'm not sure how you want to handle it. Um, I don't know if the Board of Selectmen are addressing sign. anything. We need to sign in a letter. I think the selectmen should send a letter from the selectmen or the chair, but probably from the select one would be better. So the, the current contract expires in June, which was, I, I would really not want to extend it again, but the reality is I don't know how we're going to, I don't even know she said she's worked on the chapter, but has she? And if she hasn't, it's not going to be completed in time and hold the public hearings and have her meet with the board. But I'm not sure how you guys feel, but I'm rather tired of this dragging on. It's been several years. Um, I, I think that, again, a letter with, we need to determine the past history, the dates of emails, the dates of follow-up, and the, you know, a clear timeline of what needs to happen in order to complete this on time, and then have the selectmen sign it, and send that baby off to her and her boss. When I have a customer who's upset with me and makes a compelling argument, that's how they do it. Right. Yeah. So, so letter from the Board of Selectmen? I would have it from the Board of Selectmen, and I would make it, you know, list out, you were sent letters on this date, roughly, this date, this date, this date, you know, this is our contract, this was that, you know. We are extremely concerned you know, about finishing this on time, and we would need this, you know, in order to complete the timetable for this, we would need it by this date, you know, in order to hold public sessions, to hold um, public meetings and this and that. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's otherwise known as a nasty gram. Mm -hmm. I mean, what do you guys think? Yeah. Well, yeah. Definitely. Just, yeah, we need to work on nothing else but I mean, just to have it done. Yeah. That's what we've been waiting for on that. Yeah, we're kind of long enough. And then the next one, you know, once you have our new council, you have them some. Mm -hmm. So would we want to propose in this letter, we we are, I don't, I don't think there's any way around the fact that we need to extend the contract again. Well, you know, I just... But outline. I would outline the original completion date that they agreed to. I understand yeah. that, but should we include? You really want to get them mad at me? Quite tell them that we request an audience before the start. Yeah. Mm -hmm. we'll I'm just wondering if we should yeah. request the extension of the deadline, but then request, like bullet it out, that we want a draft of the land use chapter by such and such date. Apparently, the land use map is done, so that should be able to get on the next agenda and bullet out exactly when we expect things to be done and that be part of the contract. What's the date of the contract? You know? June 30th, I believe. John, all this stuff by June 30th. Yeah, yeah. wait, wait, wait. And then let them come back with an extension. Before anybody says anything about an extension. You had a contract to finish this by right. June 30th, and 
We're waiting. Okay. So, so, six occasions. so yeah. I, here's the thought process. Starting from June 30th, all the things that have to happen between now and then, what dates do they have to hit in order for it, in order for everything to be done by June 30th? That may or may not be doable, but that's that's a way to present it. Okay. Well, didn't we have somebody else that was handling this with them? Mike. Yeah. But, yeah, he but he left. He left, left. Yeah. He left the urgency, right. and he then she took over. She took over for him. He was doing a good job, I said. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So evidently she dropped the ball. She and she was. did admit to that in, I think, October. Mm -hmm. She admitted that she got caught up in other projects. Um, one of them was the tra transportation. She had deadlines in mid-November, deadlines related to transportation. Um, and we, I mean, this email says we... And I know that she's been working on writing a lot of grant programs, a lot of different things. And groundwater so ordinance. Those, those all have mm -hmm. deadlines that yeah. they work against. But this is a... This is a contract. This is a... a a task that they took on for us and uh, needs to be done. Okay. Okay. So, 405 Governor with highways. The deadline is today. I've seen no ex driveway permit and no fence. Which one's this? This is a uh, cross down by uh, across the modern place. Oh, the um, gentleman who's doing the... They have, they have six months to comply and that's today. Is that Bailey? See, no, yes, yes. Bailey. I passed it today. I thought they had a year on the fence. Oh, six, six months. Six months. And I've seen no driveway permit they apply for for an increased use. So. And when's so the deadline? Today. Oh. Six months. Yeah, October fourth. Can I have a motion by the board for Jack to? Uh, well, it's not approved, so it's still a planning board issue. Oh, okay. It was only conditionally approved with two conditions. I have them right here. Okay. Which is what Jack said. Approval is subject to approval of a New Hampshire DOT driveway permit for change of use and any condi conditions attached thereto. The applicant shall install solid screening or 365 days per year screening of the delineated 60 by 80 equipment parking area within six months to the date of this approval. Well, the goal is always compliance. You know? So my suggestion would be to, you know, obviously they have some snow on the ground, right. but meet with them, say. At least the driveway permit should have. You, Seeing something with it. Does this, is this going to expire? Is that the issue? The approval? No, it's but it can be revoked. Okay. So if you meet with them and then you give them a deadline and they don't, then that could be the next step. Do you come in today? There's, there's a pile of lumber here. Yeah, I thought I yeah. saw some stuff going on there today. I think I would meet with them and say, listen, you know. Then, if, but if you don't, we're going to have to revoke this. And but there's no reason for the driveway permit that should have been done. Right. But when was the last time they came before us? November 1st, then it would be, right? October, October 4th, 4th was October the public 4th. hearing wow. date. Yeah. Doesn't seem like that long ago. No, oh, wow, yeah, remember that, yeah. So, But it wasn't that long after that that they had, we had snow at the beginning of November. Right. Yeah. Right, Steve? Hmm. <laughs> So, maybe I'm doing this wrong, but can I have a motion for the board to recommend that Jack meets with the applicant and, you know, work to bring that within compliance, and if not, you know, soon, because of the date of approval, it'll have to be revoked. I so move. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Jack has to abstain because he cannot enforce and do something so forth. Anybody have any planning board questions before we vote to adjourn? So, one of my conditions is a photograph. Oh, hold on, excavation. Oh, yeah.
I, I had that with my plan. Actually, I, Steve, I have a blank here. So we do, I guess you you know, I, we had Google Earth photos, but not a photographic inventory of this site. Isn't that what we actually I think, meant by photographic inventory? I think inventory? so. Oh. Steve, well, I don't know. Steve, yeah, Google, was the, Steve was the first one, so his was oops, sorry. well ahead of the other ones. But I seem to think that's what we meant by photographic inventory was yeah. Google Earth. Were the elevations on my sketch? On his sketch. We just have to put stakes in, but we were out there. I don't know how much snow was there, but... It was too much Brian to said, Brian said there's still a lot. I can imagine. Tonight. Was but, you know, actually, the, the job What I would like to do is put an elevation on one of my property stakes. Yeah. Rather than we just want to put a couple here. Yeah, that's all. Yeah. But the, the gentleman had a valid point, which is that, you know, these guys are going to want their permits. Mm -hmm. They're going to want to dig sand, and we want them to dig sand. Exactly. So... We should probably, I guess you and I should get hiking around these. Once the snow is gone, I think it's going to be muddy. But yeah. Okay. Right. Well, it depends upon where it is. Depends yeah. where it is. Yeah. Some will be frozen, some yeah. will be frozen. We have shaded areas. areas. Yeah. Well, Fred's case. Well, Fred's is, that's a whole day. Yeah. <laughs> so, so the way I read this, Is I've met my conditions. I believe if you met the photographic inventory, you had everything on your site. Right. But, but I will give another piece of paper with a test bit at some point. Yeah, so when you do your excavation permit, when you fill that out, the application for it, the requirement under 155E calls for water table, you know, to determine the high water table. You'll need that in order to do your permit to get your excavation permit. <coughs> so you, you're the only one who didn't have that as a condition of approval on your site plan review because you were the first one we did and Jack didn't catch the water table part until afterwards, but it's still a requirement of the application for, for the excavation for permit. For the excavation that permit. That and the spill company, so. Yeah. I thought we put that, um, uh, uh, it'll be one of us. It'll be whoever you want. Yeah, you know, I thought we put down clean houses. You have to post it. Has to be posted at the site. And such and so forth. Yeah, it'll be on the application, and I'll put on the permit, and I laminate, and it's there on site with two phone numbers at daytime and night times. Did you do those applications, Leanne? Did you? No, I, I will get bit? that done over the weekend so that if he wants to file um, the the application. Mm -hmm. He can file the application. So if he's met his conditions, you can sign that. Yep. You have the approval from the planning board. Then you, the next step is to apply for the <coughs> permit. Once you get the permit, you can get your intent to excavate. And then the permit's good for 20. It's good for 25 years, renewal every five. So if you want to come in maybe on Monday and see Jack, you can fill out the permit application. Or I can email it to you. Do you want me to do that? I might come visit Jack. Okay. I don't really want to, but. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry. I have a question. Sure. Have we done a worldwide search for your replacement because you won't be here too soon? As far as I know, no. And about the time the ice out there on Lake Wampasaki goes out, so do I. Okay. Just bring it up for yep. discussion. You're not going to be the head, but are you still going to be on the board? Yes. Yeah. I just, okay. this, you wouldn't think this takes up a lot of time, yeah. but it actually does. Yeah. It's kind of interesting. I never imagined it does. But. Mm -hmm. And I just don't have that kind of extra time shortly. I'm sorry, because you've done a really good job. Yeah. It's I, been really, I really good. I, I've told him that before. You guys have done a really good job. I compliment him. Thank you, guys. I appreciate that. But as, just so we're in discussion, as he goes as chairman, I go as vice chairman, depending on who's going to be the chairman. <laughs> but I, as well, do not have the time this, or the expertise. It's great. I'll tell you that the... the I'll the, still be on the board. The zoning is so complicated, being staying within legal, you know, staying within the law. I mean, because it's, it's 
it's kind of mind blowing. Yeah. I mean, they, you know, trying not to violate laws, and you know, I mean, you can sit there and read that rule book six times and try not to violate a law, and I guarantee you, if somebody sits there, you still violated a law somewhere. Pretty you know, confusing. It's mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. yeah, it's tough. So, you know, but I just can't do it. I just don't have so, good luck to my replacement, whoever that is. But you know, the ice isn't out yet, so we have a little while. And I told me, and I told Leanne I wouldn't leave her in the middle of the summer. So. so before you adjourn, I just want to distribute our next meeting. The library is coming forward. Oh, that's not a problem. So I prepared the packet before so that you could Does take the rest. Have to come before, they do not have to come before us, but um, which I am, um, they do not have to come before us. They are exempt. That's what I told for governmental use, which I included no shift, okay. in the packet. Okay. 674.54, the statute is right there. Okay. But regardless, um, they are coming in, and Matt and I have requested they, that they submit full plans, um, a letter of intent, which they did, and I also requested them to notify letters. Yeah. So, so under, just so I, all you guys understand, the municipalities under 674-54 governmental land uses, they are exempt from all town zoning. Uh, they do not have to comply with a single thing the town is talking about as written in zoning. They are not uh, exempt from state zoning, uh, state laws. So wetlands, delineations, all that sort of stuff still complies. Or building laws, only zoning. Mm -hmm. So the only one's exempt from building is state. So state buildings and State homes. Oh, building code. Correct. Yep. Um, so, what we did was, uh, Leanne you know, uh, works with Wolfboro as well. And what Wolfboro does is they treat these the same as they treat any other application. And, it, and it's good in a way because it goes through the whole process, and the library wants to go through the whole process. And when we're all done, this application will be tied up with a neat little bow and sit in a file somewhere in case somebody ever wants to you know, look at it or ask questions or things like that. Um, so it's good, and they're, you know, we said let's notify the abutters. The abutter, abutters can, if they got questions or concerns, they can come in and talk about them, things like that. Uh, but they are here voluntarily, um, so you know, just so everybody knows where we stand on this. Mm -hmm. <coughs> and we'll we'll treat it just like every other application, you know, except jurisdiction. None of it means a thing, but if nothing else is practice. So, any questions? Motion to adjourn. So moved. All those in second. Second. All those in favor. Aye. Aye. Aye.